more camera lenses we're going to cover are the fixed focal length wide angle and telefocus lens. The focal length for wide angle lenses range between 14 millimeters and 35 millimeters. They have generally a wider aperture, meaning a lower aperture value, such as 2.8 or even lower. They have an image distortion. They can distort the images. So if you look at this picture here to the left, the buildings are converging to the middle. They're not in a straight line, and you'll often see this kind of distortions with wide-angle lenses. Wide-angle lenses will give you a greater depth of field, generally, and they increase the visual distance to the subject. So, if you're in a room, and the room is closed, and you don't have room to step back into, but you want to capture as much of the action as you can, you're going to want to use a wide-angle lens, because it's going to make up for that lack of distance what you want Want to actually achieve in order to capture that action. This also makes it good for group shots because you can fit everybody in the shot and it's often used in selfies because you're just using your arms view and from that length between you and the lens you need to be able to get as wide a frame as you can to fit yourself in. It's also good for architecture. You're able to get a wide angle of view. However, you do have that distortion that takes place and there are special lenses for architecture that correct that distortion. And in general for landscapes because you're capturing a wider area. Now on the other hand, if you look at the telefocus lens on the right side, you're going to have a magnification because of your focal length. So the focal length between 85 to 800 millimeters are all considered to be types of telephoto lenses. That's a big range in there. This will allow you to visibly reduce the distance to the subject and it'll give you a shallow depth of field creating a bokeh effect. Now bokeh effect refers to the visual effect that you get when the background is completely out of focus but the foreground or your subject is in focus. So if you see the alligator here you can have a nice sharp detail on his eye and on his skin but you completely lose the, the background, the water, as just a kind of a wash of color. Now. This effect is really nice when shooting portraits because you don't necessarily want the background to distract. You want to keep the focus on the subject, which would be the person or the animal in wildlife photography. And that's why for sports, for wildlife, telefocus lenses are preferred. The only problem with telefocus lenses is that the aperture tends to be a lot smaller in size or not as low in value so you won't get a 2.8 you might only get a 4 or a 5.6 aperture meaning you need more light to come in and give you a proper exposure in a classical sense long lenses often produce better portraits a moderately long lens such as an 85 millimeter lens or a 105 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter camera used at at least six feet away from the subject makes a more accurate physical representation of the subject in the portrait. Photographing a person with a very close lens to subject distance makes the features nearest to the camera such as the nose or the chin, appear too large and gives an unnatural looking dimension to the head. You can also notice on the wide angle portrait on the left side that the nose and the ears are out of focus. Although wide angle lenses from a longer distance away can give you a greater depth of field when shot with such a close lens to subject distance, such as this picture on the left, the depth of field is greatly narrowed. The portrait on the right side shows Obama completely in focus, while the background has a light bokeh effect. Some photographers, such as Martin Schuller on the left, consciously use the distortions of a wide angle lens as a stylistic choice. To see this, we need to look at more of his images and to see and prove to ourselves that his presidential photo shoot wasn't a mistake of using a bad lens, but was instead a mark of his particular style. Let's look at some more examples of his work. So I'm on the website of martinscholler.com and I want to go over some of his works. These are his celebrity photographs that he's most famous or at least recognized for. He's done a lot of other interesting works. 
but these are the ones that really show the style with um, wide angle lens portraiture shot from a really short distance, which means that he really must have gotten way up into these people's faces to take the portraits. Another aspect that is always constant in these photographs and in most portrait work is that the focus is always on the eyes. The focus on portraits in general, whether wide angle or not wide angle, is on the eyes. Now when you're dealing with such a narrow depth of field, then the fact that the focus is on the eyes become more of a, of a statement and it repeats itself throughout the series. What happens when you shoot a wide angle portrait with such a short distance is that one, you're getting really up close, almost aggressively up close to the person. You're going to notice some details that you wouldn't have noticed from a distance. For instance, the droopy eye of Woody Allen here, I never really thought about. But now you're, you're kind of confronted with him and the reality of him and his face, and you start to pick out these details. Now you see the, the effects of the wide angle, what we talked about, here, even the back of his head is out of focus. His body here is out of focus. His, the glasses look very large. And what this does, it makes him into a caricature of himself. We're confronted with that caricature and with our accessibility to some of the finer details in his face, we're invited to try to look past that character. So let's look at some more examples. When I see this picture and I see everything out of focus except for the middle of the face, it kind of makes me feel like that there's a mask. I think with this picture in particular you see it because her face is sort of flat so you're not getting the dimensionality within the face. And when you're looking at the examples, try to pick out these details of the wide angle lens and try to get a sense maybe of how close or not as close the photographer is to the subject. When I look here at Woody Allen, I would say Woody Allen, he got much closer into Woody Allen's face than he did over here. He kept more distance away. And how can you see that? There's less in her face that is out of focus. Although you still see that her hair is out of focus, but you, you don't get as much detail also in her face as you do here. Plus you physically see that he is taking up the frame. And because this frame is cut off, his head is actually cut off, um, whereas her head is completely in the frame. So he he's not as confrontational with her as he is with, with Woody Allen. One thing that is um, noteworthy in these photographs is not only the framing, the white background, the lighting, very bright white box studio light, but you see in the eyes, I don't know if you can see in here, the eyes, you actually see the reflection of the photographer and all, all the eyes of the subjects. So you see the white box behind him, it's just a huge white box, and in the middle there's a black line that gives the all the people in the photographs like a weird glassy-eyed look, but that's just the studio lighting. And it's a clever way of the photograph photographer to put himself in the eyes of all of his subjects. This is nice just stylistically to change up the repetition of seeing a face over and over again by putting such a colorful element here and keeping them in, in frame. It's definitely important for him that, the, that these headphones were in the shop. Again, we'll look for the distortion in her face. Her nose is already out of focus. I would say that her forehead is probably leaning forward just a little bit. It's probably making her eyes look even bigger than they are already, and they are big. Here, the chin is really, really big, and and I don't know if this is conscious because he does have a strong chin line. So it's taking, again, this comes back to the caricatureness of it, you know. We're taking the caricature of this, this guy, this actor, 
and we're taking a feature of his and we're making it even more extreme. But he definitely tends to be more comfortable getting up in the f getting up in the face of the male subjects than the, the female subjects. He has more of a distance. That's just so cool here. I love how the hair goes out of focus here in the back and then just pushes out in the front. Angela Merkel. The chin again. It's kind of this, this posture of the chin being forward just slightly. This is just kind of funny because he's he's really hidden behind his beard. You almost don't see the person except for the eyes. Light box effect. It's a great photograph of Clint Eastwood because he looks so confrontational with this expression in his face and he's almost saying, you know, get out of my way, make my day. <laughs> it's lovely to, as a viewer, to be so up close to, to him because I don't think anybody in normal life would ever get that up close to Clint Eastwood, especially if you didn't know him. He did a series called Identical, shooting um, identical twins side by side, and I just love this series, just to look at them, because you can really just stare and stare. And they're, they're shot at the same height, the framing is similar. So that's Martin Schoeller. Now, not all of his portraits are wide angle. Just look at other portraits just to show a difference. Now, here you see that the lens is different. This is a longer lens. And there's a lot more space to the subject. And your effect is just drastically different. We can see what they're wearing and the way that he's sitting, what it says about him. Here's a very classical portrait. It's a longer lens. He has a much greater distance to her. Her legs are still in focus. The chair is in focus. There's n little to no distortion here. Here we're back to that other style. It's just an interesting photograph. And I'm going to stop it here. So that is Martin Scholler. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>